Hello and welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. We are in the book of Esther, and we are today in Esther chapter 5, and we resume our study in verse 1. So if you can, get your Bible, as always, and open it up to the book of Esther chapter 5. We'll begin in just a minute after I remind you concerning the Scripture Verse by Verse website, which is found at thebibleversebyverse.com. You can go there anytime you want to and study any part of the Bible that you want to or begin in the beginning, go all the way through the end, <clears throat> as much as you want to, by using my audio Bible messages, four complete series going through the whole Bible, verse by verse, at thebibleversebyverse.com. And Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Now it came to pass on the third day that Esther put on her royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house, opposite the king's house, and the king sat upon his royal throne in the royal house, opposite the gate of the house. Maybe Esther wore her royal clothing to remind her husband, the king, that she was the queen. Because remember, you didn't just go barging into the king's presence in the court. You just didn't do that. Most of the time you ended up dead if you were not invited. And so the king usually killed anyone who came into his presence without being invited, even the queen. Verse 2. And it was so when the king saw Esther, the queen, standing in the court that she obtained favor in his sight. And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. So Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter. Then said the king to her, What will you, Queen Esther? And what is your request? It shall be given you to half the kingdom. The prayers of Esther and the other Jews. Remember, she said, I'll go in and, and talk to the king. She told her cousin that because he found out that there was a plot to kill all the Jews. So she said, OK, I'll go in and talk to the king. But you got to pray and fast and tell everybody else that you know to fast and pray, too. So the prayers and the fasting of the Jews were answered. The king is at least being kind to her. It's a good first step. Four. And Esther answered, If it seems good to the king, let the king and Haman come this day to the banquet that I have prepared for him. There, there would have been several people in the king's court at this time, and she would rather discuss her concern with the king in private. Verse 5, Then the king said, Cause Haman to make haste that he may do as Esther has said. So the king and Haman came to the banquet that Esther had prepared. Esther wanted Haman there, along with the king, when she told her husband, the king, of Haman's plot to kill her and all the people, all the Jews. Now, Haman, Haman caused the king to sign the decree that made it official that it would happen on a specific day. The king didn't realize that it, was, that it was all the Jews. He didn't realize that it also included his queen, Esther. He, he was just so reckless, he just signed right off on it. Didn't look into it, didn't read the details. But now, Esther, with Haman present, wants to tell the king exactly what Haman has plotted to do and how he got the king to go along with it. So when she discloses this, and it's just her and the king and Haman, those three together in the room, then the king's going to have to decide right on the spot who's going to die and who he will punish. He's going to have to decide who will die and be punished and who he will believe. 
One thing is for sure, death is a sure bet here. The only question is, who will die? Esther and her Jews? Her Jewish relatives? Everybody? Or Haman for wanting to kill the Jews? The king will decide. Six. And the king said to Esther at the banquet of wine, What is your petition? And it shall be granted you. And what is your request? Even to half of the kingdom shall it be performed. Then answered Esther and said, My petition and my request is, if I have found favor in the sight of the king, and if it please the king to grant my petition and to perform my request, let the king and Haman come to the banquet that I shall prepare for them, and I will do tomorrow as the king has said. The king and Haman come from the queen's meal, and when the king asked, what can I do for you, Queen Esther? She answered, well, I'd like you and Haman to come to another meal. And if nothing else, the king obviously knows by this time that it must be a serious problem. But she wants to discuss with him and Haman why she isn't doing it right away. I don't know, and he doesn't know either, but notice nine. Then went Haman forth that day, joyful, and with a glad heart. But when Haman saw Mordecai in the king's gate, that he stood not up, nor moved for him, he was full of indignation against Mordecai. So Haman was all puffed up, you know, with pride. He just felt so great about himself. No lack of self-esteem with this miserable, rotten wretch of a human being. He thought the world of himself. Now, he was real happy until he saw Mordecai, who again would not kneel before him. Only guy in the kingdom who would not kneel before him was the queen's cousin, Mordecai because he believed in God and he worshiped one person and reverenced one person, and that was God. So Haman was furious. He won't bow before me. Amazingly, the fact that plans were in place to kill Mordecai because he was a Jew, and all the Jews in the entire kingdom didn't seem to matter to Haman. Didn't seem to be enough. And as for Mordecai, if he didn't bow to Haman before, he's sure not going to bow to him now, now that he has planned to murder all the Jews. Ten. Nevertheless, Haman refrained himself, and when he came home, he sent and called for his friends and Zeresh, his wife. And Haman told them of the glory of his riches and the multitude of his children, and all the things wherein the king had promoted him, and how he had advanced him above the princes and servants of the king. Haman, Haman said, Moreover, yea, Esther the queen did let no man come in with the king to the banquet that she had prepared but myself, and tomorrow am I invited to her also with the king. Yet all this avails me nothing, so long as I see Mordecai the Jew sitting at the king's gate. Haman was very, very proud of himself, you know. He, he got home, he told, got all his friends and his family together, he told all his friends and his wife how important he was, just bragging like crazy on himself, you know. He was important. He sure was. He was important, all right. From the world's point of view, he was very important because he had a lot of wealth and he had a lot of power, second only to the king himself. Amazingly, though, he was not happy. He was miserable. You know why? It's because he was the most important thing to himself. Those are the most miserable people in the world. He was the most important thing to him. And so if any, anything wasn't quite right, it made him unhappy. A self-centered person is a very unhappy person. 14. Then said Zeresh, his wife, and all of his friends to him, Let a gallows be made of fifty cubits high, and tomorrow speak you to the king that Mordecai may be hanged thereon. Then go you in merrily with the king to the banquet. And the thing pleased Haman 
and he caused the gallows to be made. So Haman's wife and his friends just flatter him to no end. Just exactly what this guy needed, right? More flattery. They suggest that, you know, that he should get rid of Mordecai, build a gallows, have him hung. His wife and friends should have told Haman, man, mister, you got a real problem with pride. You know that? Instead, they suggest that he have Mordecai hung in the morning so then you can go and enjoy dinner with the king and the queen. And Haman thought, yeah, that's a good idea. Of course, it appealed to his miserable flesh. But of course he thought it was a good idea. Well, we'll see what happens next time. This story is just warming up. Study all of the Bible with me verse by verse at thebibleversebyverse.com. Choose, click, and listen from four complete series going through the whole Bible verse by verse at thebibleversebyverse.com. If you'd like to be a part of Scripture verse by verse, you can be by praying for me and praying for God's Word. And also when you take a break from studying at thebibleversebyverse.com, go to the front page, click the Donate button, and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. Until next time, Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse, reminding you to stay in the Word and stay in prayer. Until next time, so long, everyone.